Hey, I'm Ashley. And I'm Hillary. And we're at Codecademy, where we teach anyone the technical skills they need for the jobs they want. So we're coming to you today because of the Cambridge Analytica scandal. Um, and for those of you who don't know what's going on, I'll catch you up. According to the New York Times, Cambridge Analytica harvested private information from the Facebook profiles of more than 50 million users without their permissions, making it one of the largest data leaks in the social network's history. Yikes. That sounds bad. Yeah, real bad. So one thing that we're interested in is, despite all the political scandal, is what is the technology that's going on behind the scenes? And in this case, it's machine learning. Now, if you're a human who's alive in 2018, you've probably heard about machine learning. But what that actually means gets a little bit fuzzy I know you're looking at me because people think things they think neural nets, like deep learning, machine learning, That's robots. Something. No, there's no robots. So Hillary is our resident data scientist. Um, take us from the top. What is machine learning? So machine learning is actually a lot less interesting than robots. It's about taking a small labeled data set mm -hmm. and using that to predict the labels for a much larger data set. So if you're a bank, you can predict if a transaction should be labeled as fraudulent or valid. If you're Netflix, you can predict if a user should be labeled as an action movie fan or a romantic comedy freak. If you have a bunch of pictures, you can predict if they should be labeled as hot dog or octopus. All these things are possible with machine learning. But how is that actually working in this situation? So Cambridge Analytica wanted to be able to label people on Facebook with a personality type uh, from the Ocean Personality Inventory. Mm -hmm. Ocean stands for openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. And they wanted to be able to use people's Facebook likes, so if they liked a certain page like Hello Kitty or Metallica, to be able to predict what their Ocean score would be. Um, so the way they did this was they set up a personality quiz. So just like you could take a quiz and find out which Disney princess are you, mm -hmm. then you could take a quiz to get your ocean score. And when people signed up for this quiz, they also signed over uh, all of their likes that they had made on Facebook so that Cambridge Analytica could correlate those two things together. Interesting. So how are they actually setting up this database then? Okay, so when you do machine mm -hmm. learning, you need to set up a matrix where you have the rows or examples and the columns are going to be features. So in this case, mm -hmm. the examples are different user IDs and the features are which pages they liked or didn't like. So if you like Hello Kitty, you get a one. If you didn't like it, you get a zero. Then the final step is to have a set of labels. So each row gets a label. In this case, the label was their ocean score. So they took all of this data, this big matrix of ones and zeros, along with the labels, fed it into a machine learning algorithm. And now this algorithm, when given an arbitrary string of ones and zeros representing a new person's likes who didn't take that ocean quiz, it can still create a label and predict what they would have said if they'd taken that quiz. But the big problem here wasn't that they were sharing their own like history, it's that they were sharing the history of all of their friends who didn't themselves consent. Now, Facebook has stopped this. Um, now you can, when you're building a third-party app, you can only ask for a person's own information. You can't ask for their friend's information. Interesting. Uh, so that's not great. Um, no, it's kind of shady. Yeah, a little bit. Um, that aside, you know, how advanced is this technology? So the biggest challenge with this kind of machine learning is the scale of the data. You can't run that big of a data set on your own computer. You need to be using some sort of large cluster of lots of different computers hooked together. Most people would use either Amazon Web Services or Google Cloud for that. But the actual uh, code that's being run on the individual nodes is pretty simple. If you had a much smaller data set, you could run it on your own laptop using Python. Just Python? Yeah. Like advanced Python? That's like, that's a little terrifying. A little bit. Yeah. So one thing as educators that we don't want to see is people equating machine learning with evil. Oh, totally. There are researchers who are using machine learning to predict whether a tumor is cancerous or benign, preventing needless surgeries. There are folks who are researching using machine learning to track human trafficking and rescue people who are in trouble. There's a lot of good you can do with machine learning.